Hello everyone and welcome back to my devlog series, where I'm making a survival game about a man who came into consciousness in the middle of the forest with no memory of the past and no other choice than to fix a broken train to find food, shelter and a sign of life. It's been two weeks since my last video where I shared the full storyline of the game and I'm back with new updates about it. Many of you were curious on how my train actually operates, so I'm gonna start with that. Driving the train is a core aspect in my game, so a big part of the gameplay will be dedicated to it. At first I was thinking of making a fully operating train locomotive with a lot of valves and sensors, but I realized the game would quickly turn into a train driving simulator, which is pretty boring after 20 minutes of gameplay. So I decided to focus only on the main aspects of how train locomotives work. Everything starts with the firebox where the driver constantly adds fuel, usually coal or wood, to maintain the high temperature in the firebox. The fuel gets burnt and generates heat, which is then transferred to the boiler. The boiler itself is a large vessel filled with water that boils from the heat of the firebox and generates high pressure steam. The driver constantly monitors the water level and the water temperature in the boiler, which can easily lead to an explosion when not regulated properly. But when it is properly regulated, the water evaporates and generates high pressure steam. The generated steam has many applications in the train, such as triggering the steam whistle, opening the doors of the firebox, or generating electricity for lighting or other onboard systems. But its main use, of course, is to be fed into the cylinders of the train, where it pushes the pistons of the cylinders back and forth, and finally rotates the wheels connected to it. That's it for the theory, now to the implementation. As I said, there are several types of fuel we can add to the firebox. Wood, for example, has a higher temperature increase rate per kilogram, but it also burns out faster than coal. So the use of certain fuel fuel depends on your need to increase the temperature fast or just to maintain the temperature. When the fuel is added, the temperature rises to a point and then starts to slowly go down. The firebox has a temperature limit for safe use and the player should be careful not to pass that point, otherwise a warning alert will start, but more on that later. The boiler is situated on the other side of the cabin. I know it's not meant to be here and also be this small, but I really didn't want to block the view of the player from the cabin, so I might have a smaller boiler in the front connected to this one. The boiler shows the maximum amount of water it can hold and the temperature inside. Now whenever the firebox is running we should increase the water temperature, but instead of a fixed increase rate I made it to be dependent on the current temperature in the firebox. If the firebox temperature is 100 degrees the water temperature will increase with a rate of 1, but if the firebox temperature is 300 degrees the increase rate will now be 3. And to take into account all the possible temperatures between 0 and the max temperature of the firebox I used animation curves to multiply the base temperature increase rate by a certain multiplier, based on the firebox temperature. But the temperature increase rate should not only be dependent on the temperature of the firebox, but also on the amount of water inside the boiler. So I added another animation curve to take into account the current water amount, and the final increase rate will be the two factors multiplied. This allows the temperature to increase fast when there is little water in the boiler, and to slow down when the water is added. The last thing we need to handle in the boiler system is water evaporation, and yet again instead of fixed decrease rate, I used another animation curve to change the evaporation rate based on the current water temperature. The high temperature would generate more steam, but with the cause of high water evaporation rate. Finally, the last component of the train system is the steam vessel. Now, in reality the steam is accumulated directly in the boiler itself, but I wanted to have a separate object for the steam container. As the case with the boiler, the steam increase rate is dependent on the temperature in the boiler. So as soon as the water temperature passes the boiling point, the steam will start generating based on water temperature. What's left for the player is to open the throttle valve to feed the steam into the cylinders and the train will move. The player will also be able to stop the train or pull the whistle cord to release some steam if it's close to maximum capacity. The warning lights on the desk indicate that the components reach their danger zone and a quick action must be taken to prevent them from exploding and losing all the accumulated temperature or steam. I think it's too early to create a steam page, so if you would like to support this project, the best way you can do it is just by subscribing and watching my other videos. See you in the next one.